Hey everybody, welcome to Connecting Cannabis, brought to you by Razzle and part of the WCBN, the Razzle Cannabis Broadcasting Network. Uh, we're very thrilled to have Andrea Holmes with us today. She's professor at University of Nebraska and co-founder and chief growth officer for Precision Plant Molecules. And uh, we're going to talk to her about uh, cannabinoids, major, minor, how their uh, research is coming along, what are um, the next level of things that, that are going to be rolled out in terms of cannabis and uh, cannabinoids. Uh, but at first, of course, we'd love uh, to listen to a word from our sponsor. Aerobloom is a proprietary patent-pending aeroponic system that reliably achieves at least double the crop yield of hydroponic cultivation. Aerobloom also uses 40 to 90% less water than hydroponics or traditional farming practices and produces a higher quality harvest with one additional crop cycle per year. At over four pounds of AAA quality trimmed flower per light and one additional harvest per year, Aerobloom is the highest producing, most efficient cultivation system in the cannabis industry. To learn more about Aerobloom, please visit their website at aerobloom.com. And to learn more about their current investment opportunity, please visit the Razzle Investment Marketplace at razzle.com. And we're back. Andrea, hello. How are you doing today? Thank you. I'm doing excellent. That is great to hear. Great to hear. Um, so um, let's jump right in. You know, uh, so you're a, uh, a professor at Doan University in Nebraska. Yeah. Um, you also are a co-founder of Precision Plant Molecules. So I assume those tie in somehow. Uh, what do you uh, What do you teach? Yes, I'm an uh, I'm a, co a professor of organic chemistry. So I'm a professor of chemistry at Doan University, and I teach um, also cannabis studies. And I have actually developed a program in cannabis studies here at our university. Um, I also uh, we also started opening um, the very first ISO uh, certified testing facility for cannabis here at the university. And so I'm quite busy uh, with, with, with my job here. Um, however, I'm also co-founder and um, chief growth officer of Precision Plant Molecule, which is a premier uh, minor cannabinoid supply chain uh, facility. So what we do at PPM is we really uh, focus on a particular niche market that is now starting to emerge as we learn more and more about the minor cannabinoids. Um, and let's get into that a little bit because I don't think people really know what cannabinoids are. Let's start from the kind of 3,000 or 30,000 foot level, right? Um, what is a cannabinoid? Yeah. Yeah, that's a really a great question. What is a cannabinoid? Uh, because the definition of a cannabinoid can actually uh, depend on who you talk to. So in your body, you have something that's called the endocannabinoid system. And typically, uh, what we define to be a cannabinoid is when there's a molecule that's binding to one of the receptors in the endocannabinoid system. Now, it turns out that the endocannabinoid system that is uh, uh, in your nervous system, central nervous system, is located peripherally and centrally. It can actually um, bind to a lot of different molecules. And uh, some of the molecules are the ones that we find in cannabis, including THC and CBD and some of the other ones. What many people might not know is that THC, which is the major cannabinoid or cannabis um, molecule that's in marijuana, the major one is CBD that's in hemp. Um, but, you know, that's not all that's in there. There's just a whole, whole plethora of other molecules that you can find in cannabis, marijuana, as well as in hemp. So you have your major cannabinoids that are, that are abundant most often and in the majority. And then you have all of these other little ones. You have minor cannabinoids that are um, more rare and uh, more special. Um, and then you have terpenes. And then you have other phytocompounds like amino acids, fats, sugars, um, uh, flavonoids. It's just a whole, whole, whole treasure trove of gems. And most there's a whole lot to, it, it sounds like, like there's yeah there's so much to explore right there's just so much that that we and of course like uh, obviously you're hindered a little bit uh, in terms of how deep you can dive in and so I was wondering about the kind of terpenes right versus cannabinoids um, can you what is can you just for our viewers um, what is the difference between the two what's a terpene so a terpene gives cannabis the very distinct smell some people love it and some people 
hate it. Um, <laughs> but so terpenes are very volatile compounds that have a very strong aroma. Mm. And terpenes can be found in plants, in grass, in any, like in wood. And you, you can probably smell it when you um, go through the woods and you smell the pine trees. Um, all of those arom aromatic compounds uh, that are very volatile and basically you smell, those are terpenes. And they have a lot of health and wellness benefits, very similar to the cannabinoids. Um, in fact, uh, you know, we use terpenes in aromatherapy. All of our mm -hmm. diffusers that have essential oils, that's full of terpenes. And mm -hmm. it it's really can help with mood enhancement or sedative properties, sleep, anxiety. So terpenes are sort of like um, an, uh, uh, an area right now that people are really paying attention to because uh, they you know, have all of these wonderful properties and they can actually work hand in hand with the cannabinoids. It's called the entourage effect where the, yeah. um, the sum of all parts is greater than the individual contributions. So terpenes and cannabinoids, they have a wonderful relationship and you can actually hook them together and they can bind both on the, on the endocannabinoid systems. So oftentimes I even consider terpenes cannabinoids because they bind to those receptors. That makes a lot of sense, you know, in terms of, you know, uh, them, uh, the entourage effect is something that I find very interesting. And I think a lot of um, business owners, obviously savvy ones, are very di are diving very much into that. Um, it allows them to create more offerings, but it also allows them to create products that can really hyper target a, uh, a I don't know if I want to say symptom or just an issue, I should say. I, I like that word you use, that hyper-targeting. I, I want to call it a very bespoke and personalized cannabinoid type of uh, health and wellness remedy because not everybody is the same, right? We have oh, yeah. so many differences, uh, gender, age, um, demographics, uh, socioeconomic backgrounds, diet, exercise. So not everybody's the same and we all have to pay attention to uh, what is bespoke and what actually fits you and your health stud. So these terpenes and the minor cannabinoids, they really offer a whole new um, arsenal of new products that can be developed, whether it's in the nutraceutical market, in the food and beverage market, in, in dispensaries. It's just a, a really a starting, um, exciting, emerging new field where you do customized formulations. Founded by former NFL All-Pro Kyle Turley, NeuroXPF is a sports supplement company specializing in the medicinal benefits of cannabinoids. NeuroXPF makes and sells a full line of high-quality, certified organic, hemp-derived CBD products. All NeuroXPF products are THC-free. They use a special CO2 extracting process to isolate the CBD, working hard to preserve the terpenes uh, in order to modulate the effects of their hemp-derived CBD. This adds that little extra punch to NeuroXPF products, so they taste better and provide some beneficial qualities. To learn more about and purchase the NeuroXPF's products, please visit their website at neuroxpf.com. For more information about their current investment opportunity, please visit the Razzle Investment Marketplace at razzle.com. So I've heard that there are, or at least there's, there are even hundreds potentially of cannabinoids, cannabinoids excuse me, that are out there um, that could be researched and kind of looked into. Is that correct? Is, is that is that number accurate, accurate or is it less? it less? Yeah, we don't know. We don't know all hundreds of them yet. <laughs> but I can tell you, when I started getting into the industry and I started to work with cannabis there were always these um, compounds that I came across and um, and even conferences I attended and we all called them, what is this mystery peak? What is this? And it turns out, oh, it, it's another cannabinoid. And <laughs> so, so as, the, as the time progressed, we found more and more cannabinoids and, and it doesn't stop, you, you know, first yeah. that testing was done on only five, then it went up to eight, then 11, now we're up to 13, maybe 15 that is commonly tested in testing laboratories. And that, that, that is not going to go down. It's just like with pesticides, we know hundreds of pesticides and some states are really having stringent regulations of testing for so many. And the same thing will have to happen with, with these cannabinoids. And, and, you know, the reason why we, we need to know about them is because they might have much, much greater bioactivities than CBD or THC. You know, Absolutely. they might be very much uh, more specific to a particular type of condition that can be treated. They might yeah. bind to a very specific receptor, not just in the endocannabinoid system, but in other receptors in the body. 
And you, you see what's also critical right now is that the uh, research is starting to open and it's being funded more and more. The National Institutes of Health um, is putting out uh, funding announcement opportunities for researchers, interdisciplinary teams where, you know, chemists work with physicians uh, so that there's a connectivity between science and medicine and uh, to determine what are these minor cannabinoids and what are these terpenes doing, for example, for nociception, which means the perception of pain. How can can these minor cannabinoids help? How can terpenes help with pain control and relief of pain? How can they be serving as anti-inflammatories or, or botanical alternatives to synthesized medicines in pharma? Yeah, literally the combinations are endless as long as we can, you know, study them and, and experiment a little bit and make sure that we know them. Um, speaking of which, let's dive into a couple of the lesser known uh, kind of new uh, cannabinoids, if you will. Most people, I think, are familiar with THC and CBD at this point, at least relatively speaking. You know, I think people understand, oh, THC is the, you know, the plant that uh, can get you, you know, high or that can, you know, kind of uh, to, to evoke some of those kind of traditional uh, symptoms or <laughs> tra traditional side effects of, uh, you know, ingesting or consuming cannabis. And then CBD uh, from hemp, which is um, not make you high, but more kind of um, letting your body you know, uh, uh, kind of run smoothly, uh, for lack of a better term. Um, but then we, now I'm hearing a lot about uh, CBN, CBC, uh, CBT. Um, without going too deep into them, uh, would you mind kind of giving a kind of a small snapshot of a couple of these uh, new ones that are kind of emerging? So yeah, to what you were just referring to with regards to CBD and bringing your body online, I call that homeostasis, which means for the body to go back into a natural balance. Um, and so if there's a stressor, then there's a response to the stressor. And these cannabinoids in general, they're all in the plant and there are so many of them. And it, 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 if you look at the molecular makeup and the way how they look structurally, they all have very much a similar core. Um, the inside of it looks very similar for all of them. And it's just these tiny little things on the outside of the molecule that are a little bit different, which makes it a different molecule. But if you think about it, that the core is pretty much the same, that also makes you realize, okay, so CBD helps with homeostasis and it helps with pain and it helps with um, general mood disorders, etc. Well, molecules that are very similar to that can help with um, very similar symptoms. So oh, oftentimes yeah. what happens is that these minor cannabinoids can actually treat very similar similar uh, ailments as the major cannabinoids do. But what we have now also found is that these minors have additional properties that we have not known for the majors. CBN is now commonly recognized um, that can sort of like, uh, based on the research that um, has been published either in the in the mouse model or in some kind of animal model that it helps with anxiety and has sedative properties and helps with sleep and any kind of insomnia. It has also been shown that CBG has great um, uh, antimicrobial properties also for the pain anti-inflammatory but also antimicrobial so CBG has sort of like uh, been picked up a lot of times by the cosmetic industries for topical uh, treatment. Sure. Um, yeah, yeah. And then you have THCV. I mean, you know, in America, we have always looked for the next best thing to lose weight. So um, yeah, yeah. THCV has been shown to be sort of an appetite suppressant. Um, and one thing I need to really say from the get-go is human trials are still so, so scarce. We still really don't have much human evidence in regular double blind uh, human trials. All of the um, conclusions that are currently being made or most of them are really actually based on either a cell model where anti-inflammatory or antibacterial, um, antiviral properties have been tested or in the rodent model. Um, yeah. and, and we need to actually make that jump. That will be the next phase. We need to make that jump and go into the human model. So this is the one thing we have to really, really pay attention to that when people are actually talking about, oh, CBN has sedative properties well it worked in a it worked in a mouse <laughs> so hopefully right. so, but, so there's, know, there's some hope but uh, let's, uh, let's, let's let's not, not put the cart before, before the horse, horse so, so to speak, speak i guess right? right but anecdotally anecdotally we know that cbn works because uh you know if you do if you leave marijuana out 
long enough and it ages and it gets old, um, that means uh, actually THC gets converted in marijuana in the plant by its aging and it turns into CBN and then everybody falls asleep smoking that. <laughs> that's why it's called couch weed. <laughs> yep, that's right. It's like a, a, you know, turns into kind of a stronger indica, I suppose, in a way, um, you know, in, in some ways. Um, so let's talk about precision plant molecules before we kind of wrap up. So you, you know, clearly this has been your passion. This has been, you know, something you've been, uh, you know, studying, teaching, uh, et cetera, and, and advocating for for quite a long time. Um, so precision plant molecules is obviously sort of a manifestation of that. Um, tell us a little bit more specifically about what you guys are doing there. Sure. So precision plant molecules, we really um, jumped into this industry, uh, wanted to do commodity extraction, uh, hemp extraction, uh, being really top notch with regards to quality of extraction, uh, refinement, um, isolation to be a, a very trusted supply chain partner. And as everyone knows, in 2019, every uh, all the CBD companies and the hemp companies started to experience the major price drop in the industry. And we realized quickly at Precision Plant Molecules that um, in order to stay in the game, we can't really compete with being um, a commodity extraction facility only. So we shifted immediately and reoriented our business model and uh, invested all of our resources in research and development. And we hired a whole team of um, plant medicine uh, specialists, pharma industry, PhD, analytical chemists, like organic chemists, extraction specialists, uh, botanical experts, just to really uh, dive into this uh, market that I could tell was starting to gain a lot of interest. I mean, I would talk to potential clients and we haven't even had, um, had any kind of inventory on these miners that I would talk to some clients and they would tell me, hey, I'm going to give you a year contract for 10 kilos of THCV if you can deliver it right now. <laughs> and so immediately we recognize, okay, let's go away from extraction. Let's go to the minor cannabinoids. And that's what we're focusing on exclusively right now. So we have our top-notch scientific team um, versed in so many different areas that are very synergistic, but very... Um, interdisciplinary work on uh, only these minor cannabinoids. So we're very, very, uh, um, we're the major seller right now, I would say the major interest is in CBN, CBC, CBDV, and THCV. And um, and so some of the others are starting to pop up too, but like, yeah, yeah. like I mentioned earlier, we don't really know what are all these other ones for so the market demand is going to be a question too that makes sense yes and so then i guess precision plant molecule serves as a um sort of a, a consultant or a provider of um you know these cannabinoids essentially to i assume brands looking to kind of expand their portfolios to uh to um basically maybe increase the benefits of their products or to enhance them to make them better you're absolutely right. So it's not that we're a consultant. We're de definite. We're basically a, um, a a major ingredient suppliers of the, yeah, of yeah. the minor cannabinoids for companies go, that okay. want to inhale. Uh, um, sorry, increase. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> I know we have talked about it quite a lot. I'm gonna have to maybe uh, go take a break after this, but that's a whole other story altogether. Uh, yeah, for, for enhancement of product formulations, um, yeah. that's definitely what we do. Uh, you know, I, as an individual, I, I have um, uh, also, I also own my own company where I do um, botanical formulations that um, are non-cannabinoid and cannabinoid based. And within that uh, company role, I, I co-own it with my partner. Um, we uh, do consultations as well uh, for customized formulations that are botanical. Um, so we do work with international clients as well as U.S. clients in helping them launch 
very specific um, customized products that you know everybody you have to you have to agree that if everybody knows how to make a 500 milligram CBD tincture right you, you can get that right. everywhere. but sure. but how do you find mm -hmm. something for example that helps you with a hangover okay you know, what do you put in a formulation that can help, help you with a hangover, whether it's an alcoholic hangover or you kind of took, smoke too many joints. So that's a demographic that's perhaps very specific that's looking for hangover shot. Or let's look, let's look at some menopausal women, for example. You know, they may have hormonal imbalances. They may have symptoms for uh, women that, you know, there's so many um, meno menopausal symptoms. So how do, you, how do you help women with botanical extracts, including hemp and marijuana, to help them alleviate some of these symptoms. So these are specific people that we need to pay attention to. Um, athletes, uh, geriatrics, yeah. children, um, you know, attention deficit disorders, um, women, men, you know, it's a whole battle of the sexes. We're all different. And what kind of botanical formulations can help men, for example, for testosterone boosting, boosting or sexual dysfunctions or aging, midlife crisis. Um, yep. I mean... Uh, the possibilities <laughs> truly are endless. They really are. They truly are. And, you know, it's really a, a pleasure to be talking to you as someone who, and you're someone who is on the front lines of this uh, in a way that I don't think gets a lot of shine, um, even though it's so core to the fundamentals of like the evolution of the industry as a whole or of the commodity I should say uh, as a whole because um, what this plant can do um, we're only scratching the surface and it's already incredible so honestly it's an it's a fascinating field and I, I'm just really really glad that I'm in this field because the excitement that it creates in in in, in society and in in myself is just beyond uh, what I would have ever dreamed. Absolutely, and well, we're all thrilled that you're in the that you're in your spot as well. You know, I couldn't be uh, thankful enough for you being on the show, and uh, really thank you for educating our audience today. And um, before we get out of here, let's make sure if anybody out there is looking to, um, you know, uh, perhaps get some more ingredients for their products or um, they want to um, liaise with Andrea because, you know, they uh, want to enhance their products or uh, get some extra ingredients, where can they find you? Oh, I guess, I guess you can find me uh, easy. I mean, it depends in what venue you want me. <laughs> sure. <laughs> you know, uh, yep. I guess you could put in Andrea Holmes, uh, Precision Plant Molecules or Andrea Holmes Stone University, that's spelled D-O-A-N-E. University, or you can put in Andrea Holmes A and Apothecary, or uh, Andrea Holmes Cannabis Testing Laboratories. I mean, I, I guess whatever, you, whatever. So you as long as you know how to use Google, shouldn't be a problem. So there you go. <laughs> uh, Andrea, thank you so much for being on today. I, I very much appreciated your time, and I look forward to doing it again soon. Absolutely, it was really fun. Absolutely. Absolutely. Take care.